Hey, it's Sam from the No Wonders YouTube channel, and today we're going to look at the 5 weirdest games on Board Game Arena. I want to preface this list by saying that weird does not equal bad. These games just have unique names or themes that I wanted to highlight. Starting at number 5, we have Sheep Boom Bar. Your sheep have wandered into an active minefield, and it's your job to return them to safety. This is an interesting hypothetical scenario, I guess it's within the realms of possibility. But the game takes a really dark turn when you start playing it. The first thing you have to do is place all your sheep around the active minefield. So the introduction sort of implied that your sheep were already there, but in the gameplay you actually place the sheep around the minefield, and on your turn you sort of play wizard chess with them. You go sheep to e5, sheep goes to e5, and then if there's a mine there it blows up and dies. So I can't help but question the logic. If you know there's an active minefield, why don't you just have your sheep go any other direction? Secondly, is this the only way we can discover mines? Can't we call in the SWAT team or something? Can't we call in bomb removal? Something tells me the farmers secretly enjoy this twisted game that they play. What really brings this game home is all the mechanics you love to see in games. Cold-blooded murder, you can push other people's sheep onto undiscovered tiles. It's got your classic necromancy, if your sheep dies you can bring them back to life. And of course superhero sheep. At number 4 we have Pugs in Mugs. I mean, I have a lot of questions, the first one being why. Sorry, I guess the first one being how. Are these very small pugs, or are these very big mugs, or is it a combination of both? The second question is why. Why do we need to collect 5 Pugs in Mugs to win the game? Who is selling the Pugs in Mugs? Why are we trading the same coloured pug cards to get them? Thematically with the sheep game I could at least understand that you're trying to rescue sheep. This one I have no idea what the f is going on. At number 3 we have Robots Ate Our Pizza. We are back on games with a theme. Robots have crashed your pizza party and challenged you to a contest. The winners get to eat your pizza. Sorry, but what? This is like what you'd tell your kid. Like, if you win this contest, you get to eat your pizza. But if I win, I get to eat your pizza. What do you get for winning? Uh, nothing. You and your friends must work together to solve four tasks. After each task, the robots might eat some pizza depending on how well you do. Hang on, you literally just said that the winner gets to eat the pizza, but now the robots are going to eat the pizza irregardless of what happens? Let's be honest, the name is pure shock for factor value. And it works, I played this game years ago just because of the title. Behind the name is a cooperative card drafting game and it's actually not that bad, it's worth at least one play. At number 2 we have Dinosaur Tea Party and this just kills me. The very first line of the description is that you've been invited to Dinerton Abbey. Such a terrible pun. The gameplay is quite simple, it's like a slightly more complex version of Guess Who. Which they say makes it a good family game, but I'm not sure, I think it could really go either way. It's definitely a game that your kids could enjoy, but at the same time, you could definitely scar your kids for life with some of the dinosaurs that appear here. Like whatever this thing is needs to be burned alive, like just get rid of it. We have a couple of honourable mentions before we get to number one. First one being Grund. A self-described war game in which you control groups of kids, and there's this weird looking cat that roams around the board and messes with everything. So yes, fun for the whole family. Second honourable mention to Auntie Mildred's list of random tasks, which is actually a social commentary on how all board game themes are stupid. But it does not diminish how weird this game's theme is. And it also features one of the best box arts of all time. Why is Auntie Mildred in a sombrero? If we were doing a list of top 10 box arts again, this would easily be in the top 3. Number 1, you guys all saw it coming, it's Kamekichi's Family's Greatest Tea Time. Just from the title alone you know this game is going to be special. Most other board games have all the words in their title capitalised, but this one does not care. So what the hell is all this about? Well the Kamekichi family is a group of stuffed toys from Japan. I really don't know how popular this is. Is this like the equivalent of our Sesame Street? Can someone from Japan help me out please? I don't know. Nevertheless they have their own card game where you play cards and fight to win waffles. The best part about this game is when you can't play a card it makes this glorious sound. And it's the only game I've ever seen where the how to play section has an eye roll emoji in it. This cannot be topped. This is cute. This is scary, it's weird, it's everything we wanted from a game. That was my top 5 weird games on Board Game Arena. Please feel free to comment your own weird discoveries. There are nearly a thousand games on BGA now, so I'm sure there are some weird ones that I haven't got to. Thanks everyone for watching, and have a good week.